station in Ch the north. <laughs> oh, jokes tonight. Um, yeah, Keefe, you, you, you're going on about your car shorts. No, uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not getting car shorts. I'm getting uh, the four length skins, leggings. I have them in my house. Compressions. For you. Compress yourself. I need them. I need them. I'm an old man. Because you are. You, you're doing a lot for charity at the moment. I've got a lot of stuff going off. Why, why do you? Why do you do all the charity stuff? Because What's your motivation? I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing good for for charity. I'm. I'm doing. I'm making up for all the bad. I'm. Uh, I'm turning into Brother Jones. Nah, I thought it was for some other reason. No. It's basically, I've I've done a lot for the Royal Crane Youth Cancer Trust for a while now. So we came around. They, they ended up getting me a, a charity spot. A celebrity spot. For, for, I don't know how, but they got me a celebrity spot at London Marathon, so I'm going to be at the front with all the all the superstars. Uh, so as a little bit of a thank you, I said I'd do a little bit of a gimmick. Uh, my squad number were four, so I'm doing four marathons in April. Uh, but on a serious side, Laura Crane, she uh, she actually got four different types of cancer. So you know, it's and obviously I'm trying to I'm trying to raise four thousand pounds as well. It's a, it's a small local charity in Huddersfield. Uh, so it's it's my way to do a to do a little bit of good. Fantastic, mate. Well done. And Andrew Allen involved in that PF as well, isn't he? She's he is, he's she? an ambassador as well. Uh, the Royal Crane Youth Cancer Trust, they're the charity that he's going to be donating some of his uh, testimonial fund to. So uh, yeah, it's a, like I say, it's a local charity, so we can get involved. Andrew Allen, obviously from Huddersfield as well, so we can uh, we can be more hands on, uh, so to speak. Are you going to his, uh, what's that do that he's got with Mick Morgan doing a bit of speaking there? Pretty sure you've heard about that. No, it sounds as though it could be entertaining. Yeah, it'd be outstanding. If he's there, it's just worth going just for that, mate. <laughs> he's telling you. He's class. Unreal. He's my hero. Apparently, him and uh, David Howes used to go around doing road shows back in the 70s or 80s or something like that, back in the day, doing the similar sort of thing. You said just around, yeah. by him in the 70s, didn't you? Yeah, 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 copying it and like Sky Well, we're hoping, <laughs> we're hoping that it's going to come on here in the next few weeks, Mick Morgan. That'd be unbelievable. I've, I've got Dave's number from the cast because Mick Morgan doesn't have a mobile and he never answers his phone. See, this is why I'm not on Twitter. I'm like the Mick Morgan <laughs> of uh, the. the uh, I can't speak. 2014, yeah. Can't speak. Can't speak. But Mick, Mick Morgan Bill. swears, though. Campbell. Yeah, I don't swear. <laughs> it's the best cop in the world. <laughs> it's Irish. <laughs> <laughs> right, two more Just got two games to go. <laughs> Saints for your OFC, Saints 34, Hull 22. Uh, Obviously the Saints had a massive start against against Warrington last week, off, off to a real comprehensive win. Hull FC a little bit scratchy, uh, scraped the win against Catalans. How do you think them two sides are going to fare come uh, the business end of the year? Well, um, just with all uh, tough one. Do you know what, I, I went for all. I thought all might uh, do some it and, um, and, and just improve on what they did against Catalan and it's good. I draw, I'm really happy for Lee Radford. I think it's fantastic what he's doing. He's almost a bit of a pioneer. You love it because he saved you that time. I saved my life here yeah, back in that Tongan game in 2005 when he only got killed. Um, <laughs> cartoon fight, I crawled out at the bottom and he was the hero that comes steaming in over the top and took all the blows for me. Sacrifice, mate, that's what it's called. Um, but I'm just I'm just really pleased for him yeah, because uh, he's, a young, he's, only, he's not a really young lad. He's only a year or two older than me and he looks to be doing really well. I've listened to loads of inter interviews. He's really honest and genuine and you can tell this because he talks a lot about his game plan and I think it gives a lot of weight <laughs> to be honest with you like if I was playing all uh, I was a coach I'd be listening to a lot of his interviews because I think fucking heck he's giving me his game plan here it's what they want to do but that's because he's such a genuine uh, nice guy and uh, I know he's really well liked at all uh, not by the club not just by the club but, but by fans the people as well fans will love him the fans will love him because they're all lads and that's what it's about you've got old people all these lads at Leeds and, and you know, lads at Wigan they, they love that kind of thing and they love that loyalty and they'll, they'll get behind him for a long way um, Saints, I don't really know it's screwdriver here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you got a screwdriver well, in your hand? I'm a rammer lad, Alan, but you're not still going to carry on with it. I've got a knife next to it. What's going on for as well? Knife and a screwdriver, to be sure. It's a power strip. I'm going to hit it. Stand knife and a red pen. It was his sock, wasn't it? Tucked it took in his sock, <laughs> old school. Like a clue dog card. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Jones did it in Simo's garage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, St. Helens, they're going to be a formidable side, aren't they? We, we, we knew that and uh, they've got another win. I think it's going to be tough for all now. We've got Warrington next week, I believe. Wow. Um, Warrington have obviously lost two on the bounce and I'm sure they're going to be pretty smart in, but I don't know what anybody else thinks about Saints. I think they'll be right up there. And to answer your question, Keith, at the back end of the season, they're going to be one of the teams to beat, I think. 
You uh, mentioned the, the, the new signing of the Saints halfback. Obviously, he's a, a massive key to their cog. Yeah, Luke Walsh. Obviously, um, had the joys of playing with him um, back home in Oz with um, Penrith Panthers and, and growing up through school and, and things like that. I think, obviously, you look at last year, St. Helens they had a, a great squad, but they were fluffing about with uh, their halves and looking for someone to really direct the team around the park. And this year, they, they found Luke Walsh, and um, it's evident seeing that the first two games that he's done that really well and I think he's been one of the biggest difference um, in the opening two rounds. Um, I didn't really get to see uh, this week's game but uh, last week's game against Warrington um, you know I thought he was the difference. His kicking game, his directional play um, obviously and, and, and slotting all his kicks you know uh, that there also helps. He seems a real leader from half back. You played with him before? Yeah, he's he's one of those he's one of those kids that um, you know really doesn't take a backward step, yeah. and he won't let you tell you what's going on. He he'll tell you. Um, he's he's the leader. That there's no way about it. It's his way of the highway. But um, obviously, as a half, you need that. Um, he's came in. Obviously, he's got a lot of uh, players in his team that uh, have been there, probably represent um, country level as well. But he's given the same respect and said, "Well, look, you know, you, you want someone to come and direct the team around." Well, here I am now. So you, you listen to me, or you find yourself on on the losing losing battle. Really, one of the commentators said he has a bit of the mutt in him, as in he's, he's got like a bit of a mad dog side to him as well. <laughs> That's... Um, yeah, well, I think you get you can see that just by the look of him. Um, but but no, obviously, uh, I think uh, it's, it's a big thing for for Saints. Um, finally got something settled and, and can really uh, direct the team around and everybody else can start playing their preferred position rather than being out of yeah, out John, of John and Turner didn't, didn't look overly comfortable in the in the house, I don't ever thought. I think he looked, looked much better at centre. He, he dominated the first game I saw, definitely. Keith is centre player. Yeah, definitely. He tried to overplay a little bit, but yeah, he got he got a superb little... Got to start with a game, have it? He's got to start with a game. <laughs> Yeah, you, you start off with a negative and then you go in with the positives. It's all about constructive criticism. Yeah, like I said, though, a couple of times he got some real good flick out wide and you know created a lot of opportunities for his wingers and, and basically that's that's the job of the centre to do. Final game of the week, we've just got Cass v Catalan, which very, very strange uh, couple of teams. These Cass, you don't know what to make of them at the moment. They seem to be so up and down, but Catalan's to lose, I think... That is a, a massive win for, for Cass uh, and a big defeat for Catalans. As a Leeds player, I know it's going to be a, a tough old trip to Catalan this weekend. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if we're right to play it, but um, it's going to be a massive because they're not going to obviously lose three out bounds. But uh, Cass done really well, come under radar, and a lot of people probably won't have spoke about them a great deal in the off season. And it, with the relegation, it's so important that you know some of them teams in inverted commas that you might have presumed was a mid-table type team get off with a really good start and get themselves out of danger and Powell's doing a, a massive job there and I've heard a lot of people talk about how, how tough and solid particularly around the rook has have been Yeah, our kid scored this week in, in, in the game and I spoke to him after the game and he said it's been class down there at the moment good, good banter, good blokes and everyone was tipping them to struggle with Rangi Chase leaving but the boys seem to have stepped up made a few good signings and Looks like a strong squad. I don't know what's happening with Seymour though. You know, he's apparently he's on trial. He's not actually signed and all sorts. But don't seems to be unlucky at the moment. Big Jamie Ellis. He's big in it for for us. Definitely. Quick question. Bottom two. You can only say bottom one. Got to we'll put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not answer that, Keith. Oh, come on, oh, Jonesy. Oh, oh, mate, I'm playing. I've got to play against people. You know what I mean? And it just gives them fire, and uh, I can't. Just say it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've met Jazz off and said that he can no, say what. Jazz has got to be honest and say he's bottom two. <laughs> We're broken. Here we are, Here we are. I thought you were leading the way. <laughs> you go first, Jonesy, as you say. I can't, mate. I'm not. I'm, I'm upstanding. No, I'm upstanding today. <laughs> We're not moving on with the show until you say. The bottom two? Yeah, yes. who's going to get relegated? Whoever finished your bottom two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you just I'm understood the relegation system. <clears throat> Can't believe you're not answering. We're flipping, we're burning time here, kid. Controversial. I'm not controversial. I don't want to be controversial. Jazz, who do you think is going to go down this year? I think, um, obviously, London are a tip to, to go down. Um, you know, the, 
the way the club is at the moment. Not financially, but just the obviously the late um, the incomings of all the uh, the squad. They're, they're basically an academy team with a few older heads that they're, they're slowly getting together now. Um, but I think they're definitely there. Um, the other team is a big pull. There's a big pull. What did you think, sort of bit? <laughs> right, you got me on spot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we <laughs> I'll, th I'll throw in the mix. I think possibly Wakefield. I think they're down there, definitely in the bottom four, uh, but we'll be pushing for the bottom two. But this is all about opinions. This is what's so great about sport. What's yeah. your opinion, Mr. Your, Simmons? My opinion, I, I reckon London and Wakey are going to go down this year. Right, hold me, Mike. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just think, I think, I think, I think, uh, <laughs> I think Wakefield, I think, I think I've been seeing the first. I don't know, just because you you should be a big difference to Wakey. That's you know you got to think about Bradford. I think it'll be Bradford or Wakefield. The weight of Wakefield's shoulders. <laughs> no. It's on your shoulders. You, you got to think Bradford. They've lost a lot of players, and they've, they've lost the top try scorer from last year and the top assist maker last year in Jazz. So if you take that out of a team, it's a big loss. And obviously they won last week, but it's. Wakefield, I think Cass will be out of it from what, from seeing the start. You could even say OKR, okay, Wakefield, Cass, uh, Wakefield, Bradford are okay, and that's in that bottom. That's the bottom four of London, definitely gone. That's what. That's my opinion. Did Bradford get any points taken off them? Did they? I missed out. Uh, but I think it's going to be this week, isn't it? If they get points taken off, I think they might be gone. Well, I thought I thought that was all meant to come out in the open last week. So is is the process getting dragged out a bit? Don't, I'm not sure, mate. To be honest. Um, Ty should know, seeing as there is, uh, he works for the club now. <laughs> what, do, what do you think of uh, Bradford getting? Do you think they should get points taken off them? That, uh, there's, there's a question for you. Is it, is it like kicking? It's like a, it's a bit like one great, you know, like when people, the, the poorest people in society, they get charged the biggest interest rates and they, they suffer. And uh, it's probably not a great thing. So it's like when people are down, like Bradford as a club have been down for a couple of years now struggling, is it right to take points off of them? force them into relegation because at the end of the day it's the fans and the players that suffer it's not the people uh, they've got no control of the administrators people who are running the place and they, they can just go off and they'll still be whatever million pounds they've got in bank somewhere and they couldn't give them monkeys so end of the day though that's like any business though isn't it if it's not run properly it's going to go it's going to go down now and you know that's down to the fact of Bradford has not been run right it's you know they've, they've ended up getting into, into trouble but you know end of the day that's the, that's the punishment that they should have, really. But no, rugby league, I, I, I think Bradford that is the business. I mean, Bradford is part of the business. The business is rugby league. To shoot a big club like uh, Bradford down with its uh, its history, its heritage, um, and its fans and its infrastructure, it, it's like shooting a, a, a part of the aeroplane off. I'll tell you why Bradford shouldn't be given points. Because all the, the only reason they're allowed to stay in the division is because they they accepted half the Super League money from Sky. So this year, they they they're operating with half. So say a clubs get a million quid, they'll get five hundred grand. So that's why they've gone back into administration because they know that. So if, if they're going to impose that, so the Super League took that money, and um, all the other clubs shared that money, that half of their money, it got given to all the other clubs. So if they've already had that, that's a punishment because to try to operate on half the budget. So Jazz. But then on top of that, you got to look at. Um, I think this week. The, the board of directors have been uh, had their offer approved. Yeah. Um, so that, that part of the the situation of, of the club's future has been put to bed and steady ground now. But you look at they've also um, honoured the club's debt. Yeah. So that they also comes into it, and now the whole thing with the relegation it, it changes the whole ball game completely. Yeah. You, you, for, for, like you say, for a club like Bradford. They should now be able to build again. They've got the peak right people in place. They've got me doing match days. It's, you know, it's, it can only, be, it can only get better. <laughs> I think I think they've they've got one of the most passionate and, and best fan bases there. Um, considering what they've gone through the the past two three years, and they still keep showing up in numbers. Um, that there says says a lot. I think about the club and about rugby league in general. I think then we could go with the same argument. What about when Wakefield ended up with all their financial difficulties? Where was all the help that they received? They've got the great, they've got the great, you know, history and all things like that. And it was only the fact that Crusaders ended up 
folding first that they ended up staying up staying up in Super League. They was in exactly the same situation, they ended up folding. Uh, there wasn't exactly the, the help that the Bradford fan that the Bradford club got there. So if it's good for one then it's got to be good for the And that's for the that's what I come back to what I said earlier that there has to be something in place with it through the RFL governing body where this doesn't occur. Um, you look at Crusaders are going through it. Um, Way he's going through it. Did Cass go through it as yeah. well? Have you, you, been, have you been to Cass? Then, <laughs> then you you got Bradford, you've got Salford. So you look at the last three years, there, there's five <coughs> clubs of, of, of rattled off and, and Bradford have been through it twice now. So surely there's got to be something in place to, to support this not happening or reoccurring, um, you know, so very soon. Charles is just nodding like he's going to say something. I'm nodding because there's like there's, there's, there's an app on yeah. the iMac over there bouncing up and down. I'm just saying, <laughs> it wants attention. <laughs> after after the dismal game that Ty came up with, that Chew Dog nearly saved last week, we've got a new game tonight, and it's called He Said What. Thank you. It's more of a like a feature rather than a game. <laughs> why do you, why do you always sound like a bingo caller when you first get the mic? <laughs> Warming up. Right. <laughs> Both okay. You've been warming up for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> right then. <laughs> like Raymond. <laughs> Raymond uh, Shabba! Raymond telephones and that. Let us know when you've done. <laughs> <laughs> right then, this game is called, well, feature. He said what? Basically, you've got to fill in the blanks. I've been searching for all the old league uh, weekly newspapers, finding old interviews and all that with certain players. So this first one is from uh, Bradford's Luke Gale. When he was asked, what is your pre-match routine? He replied, I always have blank blank the night before. On the day of the game, I like to go for a 20 minute walk with my earphones, listening to hip hop. <laughs> All you need to do is fill in a blank. <laughs> I like to have a blank blank. He likes to have a blank blank the night before. What does yeah. Luke Gale like to have a night Spaghetti before? Spaghetti ball. Exactly the same. Straight in there. Straight, oh, he's spotted it, aren't he? <laughs> <laughs> is that right, Taylor? Bow, bow. That is correct. One nil, Jazz. I thought you'd come up with some uh, quirky answers first. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say an Amshank <laughs> or a Tommy Tank. <laughs> right. See more you're bad from this game now. <laughs> right, next one. Andrew Voss, the Australian commentator. When asked for his 2014 Super League predictions, he replied, I believe that blank. I set to enjoy a sensational year and my tip is they take out the double of first across the line and a grand final victory. Who's Andrew Voss tipping? Saints. To win the league and to win a grand final. This year. I'll say Salford just because of the media interest. Any ideas, Jazz Jonesy? Say Wigan. I'll say Leeds. No. He was tipping Warrington. Oh, good, good tip, was it? <laughs> <laughs> the Lugans, the, the, Lugans, the four most experienced players, and they've got a kid at half back, and he's tipping them to win league. And what an idiot. Is it Aussie for you there, Keith? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> who, who do you have tip for the, the grand final success this year, Jared? Which, oh. which two teams do you think will be in this year's final? I think, I think Saints would be there. Um, Wakefield. <laughs> <laughs> right, Leeds versus Saints, and Leeds will win. I hope you're right. Okay then, moving on to the next one. Do you reckon, Keith? That's what I, I was going to say exactly the same. So we went. <laughs> <laughs> this next one is from uh, Sam Tompkins. On having to tell Sean Wayne he was leaving the Warriors, he replied... The Warriors? <laughs> I, always, I always say that, Robbie. What Warriors? How do you say it? Warriors. 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 Warrior. 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 Warrior.
So Sam Tonkins wanted me to tell Sean Wayne he was leaving Wigan. He, he replied, Yes, Sean's at blank, blank, blank. I was probably a little more worried about telling him than anyone. A big angry man. <laughs> Close, yeah. Would you describe him as that? I don't know, I've never met him. Oh, well, I sat behind him at a boxing show when Keith fought. Big fat beast. What do you want to say to that? So, oh, you got battered by Lee Radford. I got battered by Lee Radford. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Are you doing it again anytime soon, Keith? God, it was hard work with that. That that was probably what what up there with one of the toughest things I've done. Uh, I thought I was well prepared for it, but you you, you never prepared for something like that. <laughs> Fuck Keith, right? I went to watch, and to be fair, I thought after the first three rounds, he probably just shaded it. But then the the announcer said, "Oh, it's that close. We'll have a fourth." <laughs> and he, with a look on his face when he said that. It brought a tear to me, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel about crying. Out on his feet, and Radha's just got that, that extra bit of wind, I think. Well, he's experienced it, and he's done quite a few fights, and that thing, you, you just get so tense and so hit up with it uh, that you, you just absolutely blow up. Uh, you know, so a bit of experience, and, you know, it could be quite good, but it is very difficult, you know, and I, I tip my hat to, uh, to all the lads that do do these charity boxing matches. Jonesy, you're going to do one? No, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, man. I'd never, I would be able to get out of bed if I lost. <laughs> <laughs> if you could fight one person in rugby, wouldn't it be? He's not going to answer that. Do I? No, no. Right. <laughs> Jazz, what are you, Foster? Would you be Foster? I don't know. No? I thought you'd be Foster straight up. Keith, if you could fight one person in rugby? I'm retired. Yeah, exactly. Or someone retired, you could fight. <laughs> You just love setting everybody up, you know. Did you feel the very chance? It'd be quite tasty, though, wouldn't it? I reckon we need to make that happen. Definitely make that happen. So, how close were our big angry man? Uh, we are, yeah. Oh, We're still doing this. He <laughs> described him as a pretty angry bloke. I'm, I'm, that, I'm on point so for that. You, can that. you can have that. Well done. We're going to go to a tune now, though. OK. Uh, if you've got any questions, we've got some questions here uh, for Jazz, and we'll get straight through them after um, this tune. If there's any other... And then we've got the game. And tonight is Keith versus Jazz. No, we said you. No, no, no. Keith versus Jazz. Try me. And the loser, the forfeit challenge, after Mavis's tweet and then uh, Mitch Hurt's tweet last week, gets a tweet, a tweet off the other person's tweet for 24 hours. It's got to stay on there. You can't put me in trouble with the club, but you can take it to the line. Just don't go over it. Take it right to the line. He ain't got a club. So if you win, you can just, you can just abuse him. No, I'm bad. I, obviously, I, everything that I still do is down to the Ridge Riders with the Ridge Rugby Foundation, so it's exactly the same thing. So you can't say all that, Kath? Broadcasting. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 Four hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs>